Tonight, I'm going to close out Ignite with a short story about the time I met the little old lady in room 105. Over the past three years, I volunteered with Hospice of the Valley. And for those of you that don't know, a hospice is a place where people going through the dying process can receive end-of-life care. And over those past three years, it's been my pleasure to spend time with people in the last weeks, days, hours, and sometimes minutes of their life. Because I knew going into this volunteership that I would learn a lot about death, both from a biological and a cultural standpoint. But what I hadn't expected was how much I'd learn about life. Because I realized early on in my volunteership that it didn't matter what someone did or where they came from or how high they climbed the corporate ladder because everyone ended up in the same exact place in that hospice bed next to me. And as I watched more and more people go through the dying process, I became more and more ungrateful. Ungrateful with my own life and the people in it. That was until I met the little old lady in room 105. So it was like any other day. I went in and I asked the nurses if anyone would like some company. And they told me, knowing what I was going through, that they just had the sweetest little old lady there that day that I just had to meet. And when I entered the room, the little old lady looked a little bit different than the normal hospice patient. She was sitting perched up off the side of her bed with her legs dangling in midair and her arms pushed firmly into the mattress at her sides. Her smile was as bright as the turquoise blue nightgown she had on and her hair as curly as the fingers she was now using to beckon me over to sit next to her. And when I sat down, we introduced ourselves and I wound up spending the entire day at hospice with her that day. She went on to tell me all about her abnormal honeymoon to the sub-Saharan Africa and that one time her and her friends skipped school to see a Buddy Holly concert. She told me all about the, all the interesting things she had done during her life, all the wonderful people she had met, and all the extravagant places she had been. I remember leaving hospice that day feeling much lighter than I had in a really long time. And then the next week, I again went right back to room 105. But when I entered the room, the old lady was no longer sitting up off the side of the bed. But instead, as I approached her, I could see the baseball-sized tumor protruding from the left side of her chest that she must have been hiding from me the week before. But still, with just as bright of smiles as the last time I'd seen her, and just as talkative, we again spent the entire day together that day. And towards my end of my, the end of my visit, I, I leaned in and I asked her, how can you be in such good spirits? She told me she was grateful, not just for the life that she had lived, but for the moment she was in right now and the experience she was able to share with me. So then I remember leaving hospice that week feeling much more puzzled than I had been in a really long time. I thought, how can someone who is seemingly in the last weeks of their life be so grateful and so at peace? So again, on the third week, I went right back to room 105. But before I could get there, the nurses stopped me. And they warned me that the little old lady had weakened a lot faster than they had initially expected. And when I walked in the room, I could tell she was much more frail than the previous two weeks that I had seen her. And although I knew she couldn't respond, I sat with her and I excitedly told her about all the interesting things that I had done that week, all the wonderful people I had spent my time with, and all the extravagant places that I had been. And when I got close to the end, I put a Buddy Holly playlist on my phone, and we just kind of sat there and listened. And I remember for the first time in as long as I can remember, I felt grateful for the moment I was in and the experience I was sharing with someone. And when her time came, I turned off the playlist, I thanked her, and I left the room. So what did I learn from the little lady in room 105? I learned that gratitude can be the key to despair. And that whether or not we're sitting through a boring economics lecture, or we're stuck in traffic on the I-10, or sick in a hospice bed, being grateful for the moment that we're in is what makes life worth living. Thank you.